Good afternoon, everyone. The town hall will begin in a minute. Before we get started, we wanted to share the protocol for today. Ms. Dickinson will speak for around 20 minutes, and then we will take questions. Questions can be posed through the comment section, and those that we're able to get to during the meeting will be published for everyone to see. All the others will be captured, and we will publish responses through our website's COVID FAQ. And if it's project specific, we will message that person directly. Thank you, and over to you, Ms. Dickinson. Thank you, Fran. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Before we begin, I just wanna say that I hope that you and your loved ones are in good health. Like all of you, I'm working from home, as you can see, and please rest assured that everyone at Telefilm has been working remotely for some time now. So we are fully operational and are putting all of our energy into supporting the industry. We appreciate the impact these unprecedented times have had on our industry and your companies. Now, there is a lot to cover today with regards to the COVID-19 Emergency Relief Fund Telefilm Allocation. And I'll walk you through how these funds will be distributed. As we all know, $27 million of emergency relief funds were attributed to Telefilm. 88.8 million to the Canada Media Fund, which will be administered by Telefilm on CMF's, CMF's behalf. And 55 million to the Canada Council for the Arts, as well as a variety of portfolios through Canadian Heritage. So let's dive right into how the Telefilm portion works. First, the guiding principles that are uniform and common to all partner agencies and based on the Government of Canada's parameters. The purpose and intent of this punctual funding are twofold. The first is job security and the second is to stabilize the sector. This aid complements and does not duplicate the other federal COVID-19 related emergency measures to which workers and companies in the sector already have access. This means that while you can have access to pre-existing federal government aid, be it the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy and or the Canada Emergency Business Account or other, they simply cannot be used to cover the same costs. Now, these funds are non-recoupable, but are taxable. These funds are intended to help ease the financial impacts due directly to COVID-19 and to help keep companies alive and remain resilient. They will not eradicate all of the financial burdens companies are facing. The CMF and Telefilm are working together to disperse these funds quickly and efficiently since many clients do business with both organizations at the same time. In this case, clients can only go to one agency, so we must make sure that there is no overlap. So let me be clear, this is not a selective process. Clients will receive emergency relief funds from the organization from which they, on average, receive the most amount of funding annually. The same goes with potential overlaps with Canadian Heritage or the Canada Council for the Arts. Now, roughly 10% of Telefilm clients receive funds from both organizations. And by that, I mean Telefilm and the Canada Media Fund. Our dedicated team is already sifting through the data and will be on the ready to assist in answering questions from companies beginning next Wednesday to be able to determine where you apply if it is not already obvious to you. Now, eligibility. All Canadian audiovisual clients of Telefilm that are either a Canadian production company, distribution company, commercial exhibitor, festival, and or initiative that have received funding directly from Telefilm in the last three years are eligible. That means between the period of April 1st, 2017 to March 31st, 2020. Eligibility is granted to parent companies only. The emergency relief funding is allocated to the active parent company of each group of companies. This is calculated in proportion to their participation in each project funded over the last three years. 
Now, a reminder that this aid is paid by the organization that has given the most funds for this period. Now, companies are eligible for up to 25% of an annual three-year average. And there are, for Telefilm, three tiers, which I will now walk you through. So, you combine the total of applicable program funds received in the last three years, you then divide by three to ascertain your eligible annual average. In Tier 1, all companies having received annually a sum of up to 500,000, those companies are eligible for 25% of their average with a minimum guarantee of 5,000 and a maximum of 125,000. Tier 2 is for all companies having received annually between half a million to $1 million. Those ones are eligible for 20% of their average with a minimum guarantee of 125,000 and a maximum of 200,000. Tier three are for all companies having received annually over $1 million. They are eligible for 15% of their average with a minimum guarantee of 200,000 and a maximum of 400,000. We do as well have two top-ups. The first top-up is intended for interrupted shoots. There will be top-ups for interrupted shoots of telefilm-funded projects that were either in the production or the post-production stages. Interrupted projects in the pre-production phase are not considered in this emergency relief fund. To be clear, this top-up will have a cap and it can be stacked with the funds from tiers one through three. However, the two sums once added together cannot exceed the 25% maximum as directed by government. We will be reaching out to the producers of the nearly 27 productions to discuss directly with them in the coming weeks. Now, our second top up is meant for underrepresented communities. Of the $27 million of the emergency fund in Telefilm, up to 15% has been set aside for an additional top-up reserved for underrepresented communities in that we're looking at regional, indigenous, women, official language minorities, visible minorities, and other underrepresented communities. Clients will be asked to self-identify on their application form and these amounts will be dispersed in a second wave following the initial application period once we've been able to assess all requests. Now, I'd like to remind everyone that in all cases of any funds you're receiving from this emergency fund, they are non-recoupable but are taxable. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the timelines. Obviously, today's a big day. Guidelines and attestation are available on our website. And then the dialogue portal will open on Wednesday, May 20th for three weeks. It is, it will be current, it is currently scheduled to close on June 12th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now the application window is limited in order to ensure that we get the dollars to clients as quickly as possible and also to be the least disruptive to our regular programs. And I think it's important for you to really understand there's no additional documentation that is required. This is a much more simplified application process compared to other telefilm applications. In the future, and by government request, Telefilm will be con conducting spot check audits to ensure that these funds were properly used. We're giving you some time over the weekend to begin looking at everything from your company's side, and it will allow us the time to train the dedicated team so that they can, so that they can answer your questions and process your applications. It will also allow us to do final testing of this process in dialogue. Now, I mentioned an attestation piece. There are elements in the attestation, and these will be included for instance are, but are not limited to the following. No other similar request to another federal agency such as Heritage, such as Canada Media Fund, 
Canada Council for the Arts. You would also be attesting that your company is not insolvent or bankrupt, that your company is active in the audiovisual sector and intends to remain active, and that the funds will be used for business continuity and to support workers such as self-employed freelance workers, artists and creators. Now, this is where I'd like to pause and really stress that trickle down factor because it's absolutely key to government. As well, the expectation is that this fund works in harmony with the other government funds and you will be attesting to that in the attestation form. And finally, Telefilm has a right to audit. Now, in conclusion, I think you can tell this is not a regular program. It is meant for immediate relief, so we've kept the process as simple as possible. And a reminder that the emergency relief aid is being administered by a special dedicated team within Telefilm. If you have active files with Telefilm, your coordinator or analyst will remain focused on those files and redirect all emergency fund questions to the dedicated team. Parameters that have been predetermined by the government are guiding the attestation process and frankly are really not up for interpretation. It is vital for our clients that we disperse this funding quickly. As always, Telephone will be working in partnership with the industry. This is good news for our industry and we will and it will allow us to focus on the next phase, how to best support you going forward in these unprecedented circumstances and for when our industry restarts. I am so proud of all the staff at Telefilm, those who have helped to develop the program and its systems, the employees who remain focused on current applications, and those who have been reassigned to help get our eligible clients their money as quickly as possible. We now will take your questions. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. A few parameters before we begin. Firstly, I, um, we understand that a number of people uh, joined late because of some challenges around receiving the link. So please note that this is being recorded and it will be posted as soon as possible and we will get FAQs uh, uh, out to everyone as quickly as possible. Uh, so just quickly, uh, if I can ask those of you who have questions, please use the chat function. Uh, questions related to specific projects or cases uh, uh, that uh, that are are very specific to uh, just your company alone. Can we please keep them offline and we can uh, set up one-on-one -on -one conversations for you? We're going to do our best to answer as many as possible. If you uh, quest, if you sorry, if you post something we didn't answer it, please don't worry. We will make sure to uh, respond uh, in due course. Uh, and if the case is that you haven't heard it and you're still worried, we will be updating the COVID-19 webpage with answers to the most pertinent questions. I will now go to questions. And if anyone, hi, I'm Fran Accinelli. <laughs> Question uh, number one, are we eligible if we've taken advantage of other COVID programs? Great question. The answer, the simple answer is yes. And it's a matter of making sure that different funds aren't going for the same purpose. And we'd ask that you probably work with your accountant to really confirm that and how you'd be approaching it. Thank you. Then our next question is, is any top up funding set aside for new productions needing to spend extra on COVID safety protocols once we're back to work? So that's something that we're working in tandem on, we are really, really hoping that there is going to be maybe an extra fund at a later time that would deal with that type of situation. So we don't have the answer yet, but I can tell you we're working on it. Thank you. Next question. Are these benefits not applicable to any companies that have received less than $500,000? I'm sorry if I was not clear the, the these benefits are for companies having received any type of income and by the companies I described. So tier one would apply to anybody who's received less than 500,000. Another question, are distributors eligible for this relief fund? 
distributors who receive funding from Telefilm, the same tiers apply to them? The answer is yes. I'm just waiting on another question. Thank you. I've got another question. Um, although, sorry, although I'm an annual production application submitter, I've only been successful once in the past four years at obtaining production funding. Assuming I've been successful at obtaining development or marketing funds, does this mean my company is indeed eligible? Indeed it is. It is very peculiar. It's awkward even for us. We are not looking at this program based. It's based on which companies have received money from Telefilm period. So the answer is yes. I'm just waiting on another question. Maybe while waiting, I will say that in the last one is the Canada Media Fund will be posting their own uh, guidelines and uh, their own parameters later today. I now have another question. If we have received more funding from CMF than Telefilm, will the process be the same as mentioned today? So I think the process will be similar, but I cannot speak for the Canada Media Fund. They will be sharing their information quite shortly. Is a project eligible if contracted in late 2017 within the three years and financed later in 2017, but listed under the 2016 fiscal year due to borrow forwarding? So the simple answer, it is really based not on contractual, but monies out from Telefilm. So if you were financed later than April 1st, 2017, you are eligible. Another question, are there further parameters for payments to support workers, freelancers, artists, etc.? Do these need to have contracts or, or not? Simply put, um, the expectation is that there's a trickle down effect and you're testing to that. How you go about it, we can't impose that upon you. Maybe Julie, you may want to provide a little more information there. Thank you. Thank you, Krista. I actually, I think you have said it all. We are not going to monitor that. There is a clear expectation that some of the money will trickle down, um, but we won't be monitoring that. It's up to each client to determine how best to ensure that objective is met. I'm going to go to the next question and I'll, I'll just make sure that I introduce that was Julie Blondin who was speaking. And we also have uh, uh, ready to answer your questions, uh, René Bordage, just so you understand the voices and people you might be seeing on the screen. The next question is, how is the corporate group determined based on ownership by a parent company or individual? I turn that to either René or Julie to answer. Thank you. I can take it. Um, so it's definitely based on ownership of parent company. We only relate to corporation or companies, so we don't go all the way up to individuals. Is there a plan to send support to film regions that were already receiving telefilm funny funding, specifically Vancouver? So we will be funding every client that is a bona fide audiovisual company through this, and we've set aside up to 15% of the total $27 million to deal with underrepresented, including regions. I hope that answers the question. The next question, is, I believe, is other uh, Julie or René. Are the averages calculated including both amounts given by Telefilm and the CMF in each year? I can answer that. Uh, the answer is uh, you only, uh, it's no, it's not combined. We're not allowed to combine the contribution made uh, for a client by more than one agency. Next question. Do you have an approximate timeline for the second wave of applications for underrepresented applicants, uh, women, et cetera? 
Um, maybe just to clarify, uh, we do, everybody is eligible as of now. So uh, nobody has to wait until after June 12th to apply. On the contrary, you must apply before June 12th, even if you're a member of an underrepresented community. It's the pos possible top ups that would be granted after that date. And the reason is that we want to understand uh, the whole uh, situation before we assign that uh, top up. Pardon me. Next question. Will there be any funding made available for emerging filmmakers with production companies incorporated in the last year? At this point, if you have not received funding from Telefilm Canada in the last three years, you're not eligible for this fund. However, we are in conversation with government for those who fall outside of that, and we do not have an answer at this time. What types of expenses fall under business continuity? Julie? <laughs> There is no, there is no definition. Um, it can be fixed costs like um, rent, electricity, insurances. The important thing to remember is that the same expense cannot be funded twice by two different programs, but it can be corporate overhead. It can be a number of things. It can be development expense if you're a production company and development is part of what you do. Uh, it's quite broad. Next question, why are films that were in pre-production not covered? Uh, this uh, this uh, program is for corporate uh, assistance and uh, I, our hope is that we can address the projects that were interrupted that pre-production in uh, the phase when we restart the, the production. Uh, we are conscious that there are needs there, but we were only able to apply this emergency aid to the projects that were under principal photography or in the post-production phase. Is the top up uh, to 15%, uh, wait, is the top up, all right, here. If you receive 25%, is the 15% top up for underrepresented groups, is it added to the 25% or is it below the 25%? Forgive me whoever wrote it, but I paraphrased it. So to be, so it's it's not adding 15 to 25, we're reserving 15% of the total 27 million to spread it over underrepresented groups. So I don't have that exact percentage, but it will be in addition to whatever tier one sum you have received regardless, yes. Next question, are sales agents eligible? If they have received money in the last three years directly from Telefilm under one of the uh, eligible programs, yes, they would. Next question, do we apply the funds to the existing project or is it just for the company? I can answer that. Um, so it is corporate support. It's definitely meant to support the company, but it can flow to projects. And uh, the top up uh, for interrupted projects would be uh, assigned to the project specifically. Next question. Can you explain the regional definition for that top up component? We are aiming to use Telefilm's historical definitions and the top up for regional underrepresented groups will be in relation to the distance outside of a major production center, for instance, Toronto, Montreal, which is typically 100 kilometers. We will be providing those definitions in the next few days. Next question. If a project within the past three years is an interprovincial co-production with another Canadian company, does the eligible amount of telefilm financing considered get split between the co-producing companies? I can take that one. Um, so telefilm will be using the score sharing. So when any production that is financed by telephone, the co-producers have had to declare how they were splitting the resulting score between them. 
that is the proxy that we're going to use to split the uh, allocation that results from that project. Next question regarding development funds. If you were a targeted group, is that funding allocated to the mentor producer or to the targeted producer? We in development, we've only signed, we have to relate to the contracts that we have signed over the last three years. So it's the company that we directly contracted with. Just awaiting the next question. How will Telefilm help production that did not suspend keep people employed? Oh, sorry, it's a long question, sorry. How will Telefilm help a production that did not suspend keep people employed and avoid costs related to stopping and starting to keep productions going? Many unforeseen costs that were not budgeted for had to be covered. Will these uh, COVID related costs be covered? Uh, my production is an animated feature film. So if I can answer, yes, um, uh, the, that's what the basic uh, assistance is for. Uh, as we said, uh, this is a COVID-19 related uh, emergency relief fund. And that money we hope is, is used for helping you uh, um, face these unforeseen costs that you were referring to. And, uh, you know, you're an animated feature film company and uh, we, we made sure that uh, we had a, a period of, uh, of uh, inclusion of three years uh, in, in parts to accommodate uh, the cycle of production of animated uh, feature film company. So um, you are covered by the basic program. Uh, next, for clarity, does Telefilm Festival support, i.e. CAN or Sundance, count uh, towards this? If we're talking uh, attendance to festival, the international marketing program, then uh, no. Next question, by trickle down effect of paying freelancers, does this mean if the project is on hold, can we pay freelancers as we wait to start up again? Yes. Next question, will phase two funding be made available to companies that have not yet received telefilm funding, uh, particularly exhibitors and distributors? Anyone, Krista? I'm sorry. Julie, uh, Julie maybe can answer. It's about the scoring, uh, the, the, the split. Um, um, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. I no, I think it's just saying it's talking about the, the, the I think the, the concept of the phase two part, Krista. So it's really asking the question, if I read it correctly, um, for, for exhibitors and distributors that might not be able to receive money now, is mm -hmm. there going to be funding available in phase two? And forever we asked it, forgive me if I didn't get it right. We certainly hope so, and we're certainly working on that. And I just realized that maybe, Julie, you want to correct one of my answers. So please go ahead if I did, if I answered incorrectly, and I apologize. Oh, uh, no, no, no problem. Uh, it's uh, confusing because, of course, there are three stages of telephone support. There's the commitment, which is the offer of financing, the contract, and then the drawdowns under the contract. What we relate to to calculate the funding is the contract. So if your contract was signed uh, before March 31st, 2020, even if it the money was not completely drawn or not at all for a reason or not at all uh, or another, as long as the contract was fully executed in the reference period, it's counted towards the calculation of the support. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Next question. If a project has multiple parent companies, is the relief funding amount split by copyright or telephone score share form? Julie? Yes. <laughs> Oops, sorry, I was on mute. That's not very useful. Uh, yes, it's based on the allocation of score sharing form as it uh, was filed at the moment that we signed the production contract. Absolutely. 
Next question. What if you have only sole purpose company productions and no parent company? Will films sole purpose companies be eligible? I think the answer is yes. Yeah. As long as you're a client of Telefilm. Yep. Right, Judy? Yes. <laughs> we like those yes answers. <laughs> is pre-development or development funding applications that were successful in the last three years eligible, even if they didn't get production funding? The answer is yes. To be clear, you can only receive from one body, i.e. Telefilm or CMF. If you have a feature with Telefilm, do you, qual do, you, uh, do you qualify? And then if you have the CMF, can you get that portion too? No, it's really a mathematical equation. Whoever you receive the most amount of money over three years is the door you go in. Next question, how do we account for these funds? That's a broad question. Uh, do you mean how do you determine the amount you're eligible to? If that's the case, then I think I would suggest you you ask your accountant. Uh, you should be in a position to understand what you receive from us and from other of these agencies and determine quite simply where you should apply. Uh, and I think it may um, also relate to uh, reporting in the end, and that's uh, I think we'll have to have a few more uh, FAQs uh, based on on that, Julie, if I remember correctly, in terms of how clients re report this subsequently. Uh, next question: Does this relief funding mean that regular program allocations may be lower or eliminated this fiscal, e.g., initiatives funded by promotions program? Oh, that's me. <laughs> Uh, the answer is this fund is a completely separate fund and has no impact on uh, the, the financing through the promotional program. So any of the promotional program clients uh, should have received emails. We're starting the process uh, uh, to open the doors May 25th. There is um, uh, a, a, an amended process this year to better address the change in everyone's activities due to COVID related impacts. Uh, next question, if you were approved for funding before the deadline of April 2017, but money flowed after that date, does the, oh, sorry, it's scrolling up. Sorry, if you were approved for funding before the deadline of April 17, but money flowed after that date, does the money received after that date over the three year period count towards a yearly average in the last three years? Over to Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Just to repeat, it's the date of signature of the contract. So if your contract was signed before the reference period, but you had some drawdowns left that occurred after uh, the April 1, 2017 deadline, it doesn't count. It's not the amount that went out. It's the amount that was contracted. So your contract would have had to be signed after April 1st, 2017 to count towards the calculation. Next question. Will the eligible amount three year average be calculated by Telefilm and displayed in the dialog application? I can take that one. Um, it at this point in time, no, it will not be displayed in the dialogue application. Uh, if you have specific questions uh, you, you, or are in doubts about the, the amount that you calculate or which organization you're eligible for, contact us um, and we'll help you through it. But at this point in time, we are not able to display the amount in the dialogue application. Okay, we have another clarification. Uh, is the funding based on money received versus financing? Meaning if you've yet to get our final drawdown. So Julie, I think it goes back to uh, your point around contracts. So if maybe yes. you can state it one more time. Yeah, so it's the amount of the contracted money, not the amount dispersed, not the amount that went out on a contract. It's the amount granted under a contract signed between April 1st, 2017 and March 31st, 2020. Okay, next question. Regardless on the revenue source, is there any movement to bolster development funds this fiscal and announce submission deadlines? Uh, 
Uh, Renee, maybe you can take that one. Um, well, we expect to open our development program uh, sooner, as soon as possible. So uh, uh, just to keep in mind that we've uh, released our development program in the last quarter, so there's already significant amount of money that's been uh, uh, distributed. Uh, I think it was in March, uh, Julie, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, um, most of the money was yeah, just yeah, Just as we were entering the, the pandemic. Um, and we intend to uh, to continue uh, with our regular program of development uh, in the summer. And next question, in terms of qualifying expenses, does interest count? For example, if you pay more interest because things are delayed? I don't, uh, sorry, go ahead, Renee. Well, I think it's a qualifiable expense, but again, uh, we don't want uh, we want people to uh, to uh, to be advised by their uh, accountants or their uh, experts as they are going to attest of these uh, different expenses. Okay, next question: Are freelancers, artists who have taken CERB ineligible to be paid by these funds? Maybe uh, Krista. I don't know if you're able to give us uh, the government point of view. So the government point of view is as long as it's not paying for the same thing, you're fine. So, and I would, I would suggest that you speak to your accountant. So we have uh, just about five minutes left. I'm waiting to see if we've got any more questions queued up. Uh, can we use some of that money for salary for a sole owner? Simple answer is yes. Is it business as usual for a choice of words, otherwise with telefilm, meaning are all existing programs still active, development, talent to watch, uh, new projects? Yes, because we've really carved aside a dedicated team for this and the, the normal programs continue. Well, I could I could say also just that uh, uh, you know uh, like our export export program, the programs that are affected by the the the, the current situation are not necessarily uh, uh, operational, but uh, it's business as usual as as much as anything is usual right now. But we're uh, we're open for business, that's for sure, and our uh, most of our programs are all uh, um, operating. For your calculation, are projects that had producers deferring fees treated more favorably than those where producers receive fees, or is it strictly based on the amount of telephone's contribution? Strictly based on the amount of telephone's contribution. Next question, will CMF also have a top up for projects currently in production? We can't answer uh, for CMF. We haven't seen what they're doing. They'll be sharing their own parameters shortly. Just waiting on a question, I, I feel like we should be reciting poems during this moment while waiting for your questions. <laughs> be our guest, Ren. <laughs> I, I only, oh, there we go. Thank goodness, saved by a question. Thank you, whoever submitted. <laughs> okay, a little more precision. What if you signed a contract before the April date, but then signed an amended contract after the date? Would it qualify? So the uh, first is not April 7th, it's April 1st, 2017. So I'm sorry if uh, I wasn't clear before. Amendments, uh, the only amendments that count are the amendments that were signed on the contracts, the original contracts that were signed during the reference period. So if your initial contract was signed prior to April 1st, 2017, 
and it's only a top up or an amendment that was signed after, it does not count. It's the amount of the initial commitment from Telecom. Uh, okay, one more. Once the application is filled out, how long will it take to receive the money? Is it after June 12th when the program closes? I think so, they just want to know from the moment oh, of application, yeah. how oh. are they going to have to wait till after uh, the 12th of no. June? No, no, it's as very soon quick. As possible. The sooner you're in the door, the sooner you get your money. It's as simple as that. So please don't wait till the last day. Thank you. Oh God, please I don't. second that. Thank you, friend. <laughs> uh, we have about two minutes left. Our, uh, I'm just looking at the team to see if there are any more questions for right now. Seeing none, then uh, I will. Uh, oh, wait. Nope. Seeing none. They just, that's it. I they just messaged me. Fast, Seeing maybe. none. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing none, we'd like to thank you very much for your participation. Again, please know that we will be posting um, uh, frequently asked questions as quickly as, as we can. We want to collect all of them and make sure that we've got the precise answers uh, to, to provide to you. The guidelines are available online, as is the attestation form. I will just turn it over to Krista to say one final word. Listen, I just want to say thank you. I'm very, very happy that you were able to, to join us. It is incredibly important um, that we look, work in collaboration swiftly, and we look forward to when things get back to normal, whatever that new normal may be. Um, hopefully you have a wonderful weekend and that this gives you a little bit of peace having this information to digest over the long weekend. Bye, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today.